Hello everyone. This is Dr. David Neiman from the North Carolina Research Campus in Kannapolis, North Carolina. And this is a relatively new research campus. Uh, we have eight universities on this campus. Uh, it was created by David H. Murdoch, who is the owner of Dole Foods. The mission of this campus is nutrition and human health. Uh, my lab, the ASU uh, Human Performance Lab, is in the Plants for Human Health Institute building. So uh, we all work together along with various companies to uh, once again evaluate the impact of different uh, foods and nutritional products on human health and do it at the very highest level of science. A little bit about myself. Uh, I direct uh, our human performance lab and um, this is uh, organized by Appalachian State University. Uh, I'm the vice president of the American College of Sports Medicine. I've published a lot, I've received a lot of research grants and have authored uh, about nine different books on health, physical fitness, uh, and nutrition. So Jim Ware from LifeMax uh, came to my laboratory and was interested in us evaluating the effect of chia seed, especially on the omega-3 fats in the blood. So in this pilot project, we had 11 overweight postmenopausal women, and they took in 25 grams per day of Mila and they took it for seven weeks. The, the main part of the study is we took blood samples after one, two, three, five, and then seven weeks of supplementation and then evaluated them for various types of omega-3 fats. Now, I'm sure that many of you know that the predominant omega-3 fat in uh, chia seed is what we call alpha-linolenic acid or ALA. And then we, what we checked is to see if the Mila omega-3 fat could be converted to what we call EPA DHA, which is the uh, type of fat that's in fish oil. So uh, there's a lot of debate as to whether or not the body can take the plant ALA and then convert it to this fish-like oil, EPA, DHA, in the human body. That was the main purpose of the study. So here's our uh, primary result. The first result is, as you can see here, this, this line represents uh, ALA increase. So we took two samples at the beginning of the study before they started a supplement. And then here it is after one week, and then two weeks, three, and then we combined the average of five and then seven weeks where we saw a plateau. The interesting thing is this was a 138% increase in ALA. This is a very strong increase in the plant omega-3 in uh, the, the human blood. Of, gr of great interest to us, though, was this 30% increase in the EPA. Uh, this is a very strong increase, uh, showing that the uh, omega-3 fat from Mila did convert quite readily to this beneficial EPA. We had uh, just a 4% in another type of omega-3 fat and a slight decrease in another type, but uh, typically of, of great interest is what happens to ALA and EPA. And if you look at this chart, we did a statistical adjustment that allowed us to look at uh, the increase in ALA and then using the same uh, z-score transformation, it's a, st a statistical comparison that allows uh, us to see things in parallel. And you can see here that as the ALA went up in the blood, as people ate Mila, the EPA went up as well. Th this is a huge finding. and. Um, it just shows that the omega-3 from Mila does convert to this beneficial EPA. There's every reason to believe that there should be multiple health benefits from this uh, increase. 
Now another uh, aspect of this study is Jim uh, sent us nine different samples of chia seed and we analyzed them and compared them uh, for multiple nutrients. So uh, for example protein uh, as you can see here at the bottom these are uh, different strains of chia seed that are found in different countries different elevations and uh, and then here we have Mila the the blue bar and what we found is that the protein content of Mila is uh, very good uh, equal to any of the other strains and then fiber was unusually high uh, notice that this uh, is head and shoulders above the fiber content of all the other strains that we looked at and then uh, very importantly we looked at uh, the omega-3 alpha linolenic acid content across the samples and what we did here for comparison is looked at the percent difference from the lowest sample so um, this sample in this sample uh, had low levels of omega-3 and then we just looked at the percent difference uh, across the different uh, samples and as you can see Mila had 173 percent more of this ALA or omega-3 fat uh, than the lowest samples. Now Mila uh, was also analyzed for many different minerals and this was done at the USDA lab at Cornell University we sent a sample, our samples there and this lab uh, works with us on various projects and you can see here that copper that 125 gram serving of chia seed provided more than half of the copper that you need in a given day and then as you keep uh, going down the list you can see about 40 percent of those minerals iron uh, about 29 percent of what is needed in a given day zinc 15 percent 11 percent of the calcium that's needed in a given day so uh, this is very impressive um, Mila is very rich in uh, a wide assortment of minerals and if you look um, across the different strains you can see for example that Mila uh, is the highest for iron and and this is a great benefit for Mila. Also, uh, you can see that Mila is also very high in selenium. Notice that uh, this particular strain, the reason there was no selenium in it is because it was probably grown in soil that had no selenium in it. Zinc, once again, you can see how Mila is head and shoulders above the other types of chia seed. Now I think our greatest contribution uh, in this study and to the scientific literature is the phenolic content of the different uh, chia seed samples. And notice once again how Mila had the greatest amount of phenolics. Now what are phenolics? These are the antioxidants that are in the chia seed and that help to reduce oxidative stress in people. So Mila has um, a a high amount compared to the other samples. Um, very interestingly we uh, broke down these phenolics into the main types that were present and uh, these are the different strains and in, in this last bar the green one this one right here shows that Mila compared to the other strains was especially high in what we call protocatechuic acid this is the main type of antioxidant in chia seed and protocatechuic acid is just uh, beginning to be studied in humans but thus far there is a lot of hope that this particular phenolic may reduce cancer in humans much needs to be done in this area and we hope to work with LifeMax in some additional research on that so in summary seven weeks uh, of taking in Mila increased the a ALA 138 percent and the EPA 30 percent. These are strong increases. We found it took about a month uh, for 
the levels to reach their highest level from taking 25 grams a day. Also, we found that compared to other samples, uh, that Mila in particular uh, was very high in a wide assortment of minerals and protein and fiber. Uh, this, this is a, a great attribute of Mila is, is having all of these great nutrients in it. Now, we didn't show you the data. We had some promising changes in blood lipids and an inflammatory marker called CRP, and we're going to be following this up in some future research. And very importantly, uh, we want to take a closer look at the protocatechuic acid, the major antioxidant in chia seed, and we have a zebrafish model uh, at the NCRC that will allow us to very quickly determine whether or not this uh, particular chia seed phenolic or antioxidant has anti-cancer benefits. And uh, once we show this in zebrafish, and then we can take that to humans.